Well, and a navy, 8,000 miles away. Napoleon Bonaparte is usually credited with the remark that an army marches on its stomach, but long before his time, Samuel Pepys, as Surveyor General of Vittling for His Majesty's Navy, remarked that an Englishman, particularly a seaman, loves nothing so much as his belly. Both men would have been vindicated, not to say astonished, by what goes on behind the barrier here. Even in normal times, the Royal Navy Supply and Transport Service depot here plays a vital role. In recent years, the Navy has become responsible for supplying all three services with food rations, and at the Botley Depot, they prepare all the lightweight packs that fighting troops need in the battle zone. Since the crisis developed, the 150 civilians here have been working overtime, keeping production going seven days a week, packing up to 5,000 indiv individual rations every day. Larger packs contain the day's ration for a 10-man unit. The smaller ones are designed to be carried individually by frontline soldiers and by Royal Marines. On the heat of a summer's day, the chocolate toffees are probably in some small danger of melting. I'm told in a falcon's winter, they become bullet hard, just about chewable. They're part of the most compact Russian pack there is. It's the Arctic pack, designed to keep men fed, fighting fit for 24 hours and up to 32 degrees of frost. You start the day naturally enough with breakfast, which is porridge and drinking chocolate. There's no set lunch in the middle of the day, but energy giving snacks beef spread, chocolate, nuts and raisins, and your toffees, still hopefully chewable. The main meal has a choice of four courses. In this one, it's uh, chicken soup, beef stew, garden peas, dried potato, and for pudding, dried apple flakes. That's the food, the drink, instant tea, instant coffee, and dried milk. What's left in the box? Well, there are tissues, there's toilet paper, there are matches, salt, and when you finish with the box, you use the target on the side for range finding. Once they're empty, it hardly matters, but the boxes and the goods inside have to be light and robust. Deliveries by helicopter, perhaps close to enemy positions, are carried out with speed and little ceremony. Once the troops have taken delivery, all they have to do for dinner is add water or perhaps melted snow. Well, it's very important that the food is tasty because in the cold, wet, miserable conditions that they're experiencing in the Falklands, they need decent foods in order to maintain morale. And I believe there are new flavours on the way for anybody who's a little bit fed up with the old ones? Yes, there are some new flavours being trialled at the moment. Beef bourguignon is one, chicken in wine sauce is another, and uh, we hope that they're going to prove satisfactory. This one looks about ready, doesn't it? And try a bit? Yes. Let's... I think you should see what it tastes like. Is, uh... Very good. Well, my compliments good. to the chef. I suppose you are the chef, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. With true military precision, the depot say that each Arctic pack costs £3.73 pence and contains 4,500 calories. It would hardly do on a diet, but then the Marines, the Paras, and no doubt their newly arrived colleagues are getting more than their fair share of exercise.